In this video, I'm going to explain to you what is the difference between primary outcome and secondary outcomes of clinical trials. Hi everyone, my name is Randerson Cardozo. Welcome to the Meta-Analysis Academy. In this channel, I share with you how you can develop systematic reviews and meta-analysis, how you can publish these impactful manuscripts, these papers, and with that, advance your career. I've applied these very same methods in my own career with almost 60 publications at this point. And in this channel, I hope to share with you how you can do the same. So if you're interested in this content, hit the like and the subscribe button and stay tuned for videos videos posted in our channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between a primary outcome and secondary outcomes of clinical trials. And I'll start off by saying that a primary outcome is the one by which power calculations are performed in clinical trials. So what is a power calculation? It is the calculation of how many patients a study needs to answer a given clinical question. So I'm going to I'm just going to bring an example here and then we're going to discuss as using this example. This is a report from the DAPA HF trial. This is a trial evaluating the use of DAPA glyphosate in patients with heart failure. So in their methods they wrote the following. They said they calculated 844 primary outcome events that would provide a power of 90%. So let's talk by about each of the points over here so you can understand what a primary outcome is. They said that they need 844 outcomes, 844 events. So they need to recruit enough patients to have 844 events. They use a power of 90%. Remember, power is the ability, the capacity to detect the significant difference between groups if such a difference exists. And what difference are they anticipating? That's another important element of power calculations. They're anticipating a difference, a hazard ratio of 0.80 between the intervention and control group, between dapagliflozin and placebo. Alpha or 0.05 means that they're willing to accept up to 5% of type 1 error. Remember what that is? We talked about that in a separate video on p-value, but just to remind you, 0.05, or in this case an alpha of 0.05, means that 5% or below is the likelihood that they would commit a type 1 error. The likelihood that they would say there is a significant difference between groups when in fact there is no significant difference between both groups. And then how would they know how many patients they need to recruit to get 800 44 events. It's written in the sentence below. They expected an incidence of the event of 11%. And with that, they said, oh, we need 4,500 patients to give us the number of primary events that we need. So now let's talk about how the fact that all of these calculations were based on one outcome. All of these calculations, they weren't based on mortality. They weren't based on stroke. They weren't based on myocardial infarction. All of these calculations were based on one endpoint, and that endpoint is what a primary outcome is. In this case, the primary outcome is what you see in the first row here. It's the composite outcome of hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death. Everything else that you see, cardiovascular death alone, hospitalization for heart failure, worsening renal function, all-cause mortality, all of these outcomes outcomes, they're secondary outcomes. There was no power calculation or sample size calculation made based on these other outcomes. The sample size calculation is based entirely on the primary outcome. So the primary outcome to answer the question in this case, the primary outcome is the one on which the sample size calculation is based on. All right, secondary outcomes, everything else. Okay, so just so every time you read that in future studies, you read what is the primary outcome. It means that they calculated the sample size needed to perform the study based on that outcome. Now, a common question that I get from students in the Meta-Analysis Academy is, does this matter for the purpose of a meta-analysis? Can I combine primary and second outcomes from different studies? Let's say you're doing a meta-analysis and your outcome is all-cause mortality. And for one study, all-cause mortality was a primary endpoint. For the other study, all-cause mortality 
but it was a secondary endpoint. Well, it really doesn't matter for your intents and purposes. You don't really care. So for the purpose of doing a meta-analysis, it doesn't matter if the clinical trials, if the studies you're bringing into your meta-analysis included that outcome as a primary or secondary. That doesn't affect, affect you at all. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button, and I'll see you in future videos here in the Meta-Analysis Academy.